honor and make him relate with member situation makes him also susceptible to molar fall. A member come to you, Pastor, my husband is beating me, he's doing this to me, he's doing that to me. Pastor need to sympathize and empathize. If care is not taken, if the pastor is not extra conscious, that aspect of him that the woman has awoken as a result of empathy, as a result of sympathy, can lead to his moral fall. Right. And when such thing happens, you go about, that man is not a man of God. If he's a man of God, he just proved that he's not a man of God. How dare you? You have not been there. If you are there, you will understand what we are saying. Yes, he can fall. He can be manipulated by gift, yes, by position, yes, by anything. He's a man. If you don't accept that, you can go. He can be bribed. But only daily walk with Christ can save him. Only daily walk with Christ can save the ministers. So daily walk with God is not negotiable. You don't serve God on prophecy. Not past glory. I healed before. That was past. I cast that demons. Try it now. That is it. Pastors, they can be depressed. Even, the, even your, your problems in the church have already depressed him. Why can't he be depressed? When he hears what he's not supposed to hear. He sees the things he's not supposed to see. He feels the things he's not supposed to feel. So neighbors dress anyhow. You make him depressed because he needs to say holy. A lot of things are happening to him. So why can't he be depressed? And you say, how can he be depressed? When is the one canceling those depressed? Be careful. You don't know him. They pretend a lot. The ministers pretend a lot. You know why? Even when they are sick, they smile at you. They tell you, let a weak say, I am strong. They pretend a lot. Because if as a member you bring your problem and the pastor starts telling your problem, you will be the first trumpeter to tell the whole God. You know that man of God? I don't even know the kind of man of God he is. When you bring your problem, he gives you three. You know? So he, he, he just, in fact, you have conditioned him to pretend that it is well. That is the man of God. Are you not, the, Christ said something to his disciples. Come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. You need it. As a matter of fact, it has been discovered that most of our pastors don't use their leave. They don't use their leave. They have become workaholic. And some of them die of high blood pressure. And make people to question their God. Because you don't sleep at night praying for members that will still accuse you of not praying anyways. And the daytime you walk, when it is time for your leave, you say, where am I living to? We have been called to the ministry to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. You dwell here. As a minister, use your leave. I beg you today, use your leave. Because when you die, somebody else will take over. And again, medical checkup, it is not a weakness as a pastor. I am a pastor. I know the Lord. I fear the Lord. Do you fear the Lord more than the prophet that died? He also feared the Lord. Medical checkup is not a weakness. But we have discovered when they tell you, Pastor, I think you need to do further checkup. The Lord will take care of it. I tell my members that, and I should be able to accept that. The Lord will want take care of it. And you, you fall down from the pulpit and die. And the Lord has really taken care of it. 
What are we not saying? Plan for a resort. Look, let me tell you something. Ladies, if you want to marry a pastor, you have to think very well. If you don't think very well, wake up. Because they have, they have Bible tests to convince you that going for a resort is not really necessary. They have them at their fingertips and they easily quote it for you. If you know that you are emotional dried as a lady, please, I beg you, wear yourself before you marry a pastor. In fact, especially a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Because, you know, I discovered something. I discovered something that is it a sin to, it should be a routine. In fact, the pastor should even do it more. Because they have to cover up for the time they are not around. But they don't do it. Most of them, some do it. I know of a pastor who has taken it as a routine to do it. In fact, he made it as a, as a tangible thing so that he will not forget to do it. At least a year, he takes his wife out. They just leave people and even go back and think, when they started the ministry, how was it? Are they on track? No, we must do the work of the Lord. Be careful. Come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. Get White said that ministers' children are the most neglected children in the world. They clear other people's vineyard. They help you to cancel your children. But their children are going through bitter experiences. Psychologically, the male children need their father. You can't negotiate that. But the mother becomes the father, and the mother, the cap, a lot of things. You know what? You need, if a minister is not extra conscious, you know, thank you, Pastor Lord. Your pastor was saying, uh, the principal was saying that the time you are giving, I appreciate it. Many of our pastors need to learn that when you retire, you don't retire to the church, you retire to your home. And when you retire to your home, you meet your default children. You meet your wife that is embittered with you. But have decided to suffer deathly covered it. Because you are a man of God, we must not be. It is formality and spirituality, from the spirituality that you find there. Be careful. These are your ministers. You know, neglected children, they have need, they have need. What are the needs? They have neglected children they need to take care of. It is what at the point told the minister to leave the feet and go home. She commanded the minister. She wrote a letter that that minister needs to leave the field and go home. Because what is happening in his home was not palatable. His son was becoming unruly and nobody could control him. And she knew that it was as a result of the man's deficiency at home. And he was withdrawn and said, go back home and go and stay with your family. You need it. Nobody will do that to you now. In fact, our, our pastor, our confessor will not do that to you. Listen, they are buried in the world. The ministers are buried in the world. They are buried in the world that they don't know what is happening around them. They want to see what is in the world to tell their members. You get what I'm trying to say? They study the world. Some of them, they study. Ah, I need to be there. And some of them, because of the social media now, internet, because the world is also in the social media, they are buried in the social media. Because one, the church is a global church. They need to know what the conference is saying. They need to know what the district is saying. They need to know what the union is saying. They need to know what the world church is saying. So they will be addressed with the latest happening in the world. And they, got, they get all these things from where? Social media. Sometimes they are so close to the church that they are not even close to their families. Let's be careful. 
I pray that God will help them. I just want to tell you that these are some of the things they are facing. They are humans. And the day you don't realize this, have you been praying for them lately? Do you go down on your knees to pray for ministers? To say, God, uphold them. Help them. All you want to know, where with their fuel carry them to? Okay. We know some people, okay, he's a young pastor, he's doing grand grand. We we'll know where he can get to. This was how Pastor in Ketuku started. He did not last. He did not last in the ministry. He has started again, preaching vehemently. Don't worry, we are looking at him. We know where he will get to. You are orchestrating his downfall, and the Lord will disgrace you. Because you are not, you are not helping the cause of God. You are to uphold him in prayer. You are to advise him. He needs a counselor. Are you old? You can advise him. Let him take the one he can take and let him discard others. But he has picked some things. I pray that God will help you all. And you will not fall by the wayside. And you will grow to, to be able to say yes. Thank you God for what you are doing for me. This is the people that are taking care of us. Now I want to ask this question again. If you hear that your pastor is owing and is a perpetual borrower, what will you say? What are you going to say? If you have successfully paid your children's tuition fee and you have change in your pocket, and you are hearing that the pastor is trying to go and meet cooperative so that they will slash his small money that is coming for the family so that they will be taking it small, small. What are you going to do? I pray that God will help you to minister to the ministers in Jesus' name.